All right, thanks everyone for joining our uh, inaugural webinar here at Makina Labs. Um, I am sitting here uh, with our CEO and co-founder, Ed Mayer. Uh, my name is Alex Huckstep. I lead our business development and sales. Um, and uh, our other co-founder, Bobak, may be joining us towards the end for the technical Q&A. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ed uh, to kind of introduce the company and the mission and the vision. Well, thanks, Alex. Excited to share for, I think for the first time, we're doing this live from the shop floor, having the parts formed in the background. I think in the end, we're gonna do a quick walkthrough. Um, but Machina Labs, uh, we are a startup started in 2019. Um, and we are focused on developing next generation of manufacturing technologies, specifically focused on sheet forming using robotics uh, and artificial intelligence. By the way, there's a sheet popping probably happening that you're, you're hearing. So as we're forming some of these parts, uh, the sheet goes into different states. Uh, but through the magics of, magic of our path planning, in the end, you get the right part. But uh, you might hear some popping and, and some sounds as we're talking. Um, we are right now close to 60 people. Uh, our headquarters is in uh, Los Angeles, California. You can kind of see a picture down in the right corner. Uh, we have been working with a lot of customers uh, in the aerospace defense space, uh, forming uh, big sheet metal parts from you know rocket fairings to um, to satellite tanks to composite molds for drones, which Alex will be referring to. Um, we have 22 robots deployed in our current facility. It's a 30,000 square foot facility. Um, and uh, no, excited to kind of expand uh, the type of customers, the type of products we're working on. So before we kind of jump into the technology and talk a little bit more about the types of parts and offerings that we have, um, I want to quickly talk a little bit about what excited us about starting Machina. Uh, you know, as a engineer working in hardware companies, you know, there was always a challenge of if you wanted to make a part, you had to pretty much build a factory for it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of tooling um, that are specific to your parts, specific to your material that you have to develop uh, in order to make a part. Um, so the traditional factories or the factories of today, um, uh, they're very good at making the same part over and over again, uh, but they're not very agile. Um, but if you go back to, uh, uh, you know, the way we manufactured before current factories, if you look at craftsmen, um, they were actually pretty, pretty agile. You know, one day a craftsman could pick up a hammer and form a, a piece of metal into a shield. The next day they could use the same hammer, but apply it creatively to a rod and form a sword. Um, so we, have a, we had agility uh, before current factories. When we came to current paradigm of factories with tooling, specifically geometry, we lost that agility. Uh, but we could make the same part over and over again. So what we're trying to do at Machina and the genesis here at Machina is, uh, can we basically combine both of those worlds? Can we create a manufacturing technology that's not only agile, but also scalable? Um, and that platform is what we call Robotic Craftsman Platform. Uh, it's a platform that works very similar to a blacksmith or a sheet shaper. Uh, it's a set of robots that have same dexterity, um, but they can pick up different tools, apply them differently to the material, um, and do different types of processes. The first process we started for with is sheet forming. Um, and, um, and we are planning to add more processes to, to the cell. Right now we do sheet forming, we have sheet trimming, and hole making, basically the robot after it's done forming, it picks up a trimmer and does trimming. Um, and uh, we're planning to add more operations to ourselves uh, over, the, over the next few years. So the idea is that we're combining that agility that the craftsman has, but through robotics, we can also get the scale uh, uh, and uh, the volumes and throughput that traditional manufacturing has. So I'll pass it over to, uh, uh, to Alex to talk a little about, bit about our current offering. Okay, so you should all see a video now playing, uh, showing you the robo forming process. Uh, and bear with us because there's a bit of a delay here on sharing this, on sharing the slides. Um, just a quick kind of uh, PSA: you can also go to our website and see all this video footage um, in, in much better quality right on our homepage, makinalabs.ai. 
So uh, like Ed described here, you're, you're watching kind of a time lapse of the robots uh, loading a sheet automatically and then incrementally forming it through that kind of pinching mechanism that you can see in the little diagram there that allows us to follow this tool path, similar to like how a 3D printing or a CNC machine works, but draw out these large, complex, deep forms out of sheet metal that would be virtually impossible to manufacture otherwise. And uh, like I'd mentioned, uh, every time we form a part, we then scan it. This is happening in line on the same uh, robotic cell following the same digital process. Give that a second to load here. It might be synced with it, actually. Okay. Yeah, here we go. And uh, we've designed this platform to be very adaptable, modular. Uh, you can see here, we've put down the forming tooltip and we've picked up a spindle to do cutting. Uh, we can do drilling. And we've really designed and architected this technology as a platform. So what you see here are kind of the first three or four capabilities, uh, but there's a lot on the roadmap uh, that's coming. When you think about different processes that make sense uh, as a secondary operation, um, things like additive processes, subtractive processes, joining processes, a lot of exciting things to come. And in terms of kind of the problem we solve and the market that we're addressing, you know, we started with this focus on sheet metal forming. It's one of the largest manufacturing markets that exists. Hundreds of billions of dollars are spent every year on forming sheet metal. Uh, the tooling can be extremely expensive, can be very long lead time. And the speed and agility is really what we unlock for our customers in those markets. So getting parts in under a week is possible with this system. Um, that's even large, complex parts that most people would think, you know, typically take months to years to get first, first samples. Um, we're also unlocking new capabilities in terms of pushing uh, materials that, that wouldn't be easily formed with stamping or other processes. Um, and in terms of the size and depth and geometry. Um, and then of course, when we can, we look to save our customers money too. So um, eliminating the, these very large expensive dyes um, can allow us to really improve the economics of sheet metal forming too. So we're serving a, a really wide variety of industries, uh, aerospace, defense, a lot of our early, uh, early projects and customers started there, uh, but we're seeing a huge expansion and in interest from composites across you know, aerospace defense, but other industries too, um, automotive, industrial, consumer products, art, architecture, you know, any, any, any industry that uses large sheet metal parts, uh, we, we, we believe we bring value to. And specifically, we bring a lot of value to uh, new product development. And we can engage with customers early on in the design cycle so they can really take advantage of the speed of iteration and learning. Um, and typically we're looking at parts that would otherwise be manufactured using forming processes, um, like stamping, using uh, manual sheet metal fabrication approaches, forming, spinning, virtually anything that ends in forming. Um, there's a lot of kind of uh, uh, niche processes out there. And typically targeting part volumes less than 10,000 units a year is really where the scale of the economics work today, although we're working to expand that. And again, large, deep, curved parts. Um, in virtually any metal. So we've proven here that we can basically form any material that, that is uh, malleable enough to bend. So, so virtually every grade of aluminum, steels from mild, mild to stainless, high strength carbon steels. We form some grades of titanium, inconels, nickel alloys, invar for composite tooling, um, things as exotic as niobium for very high time uh, and even hypersonic applications. So the possibilities are really, really endless in terms of the speed, in terms of the capability and, um, and what we can do. And we're going to give you a little bit of a, a, a tour here and answer any questions, um, but really invite you guys to share um, with us any, any applications you have in mind, any questions, um, any designs. Of course, we can set up an NDA after this and, and start to give you feedback. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing slides here. And I'm going to keep the audio rolling. Uh, I'll put myself on mute. Do the, 
do people have the ability to ask? No, they don't have the ability yeah. audio. They do have audio to ask questions. They don't have audio. But oh, we're audio. getting questions through LinkedIn here. So do you see any good ones? Where do you want to start? So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna walk slowly start to uh, walk closer to the cell and uh, give you a quick kind of closer look of how the forming is being done. Uh, and I, I will answer questions uh, that comes up in the comment. I think the first question was, uh, what is the speed the robot run at? Uh, I actually want to start getting the phone. The speed, but right now, I mean, we have formed for robots as fast as 1,000 kilometers per second, uh, uh, which kind of to give you an opinion, that means a part that's 12 foot by five foot and like maybe four foot deep can be done, the thousand millimeters a second can be done in two, three hours, two hours. Uh, but right now we haven't really optimized the speed. Uh, so the average speed is around 70, 80 millimeters per second because you know we're competing with the lead time of the stamping which gets through three months to five months. So the first part um, usually comes out uh, in a week for us. Uh, but we are optimizing your speed and getting it close to that thousand millimeters per second over the next uh, few months. Um, I think the other speed, the other question was around: Can we form ninety degree uh, wall angles? Uh, the ninety degree wall angles are possible. Um, if you want to get closer to this, actually, this part right now, I'm I'm being a little bit not OSHA compliant, but we have somebody over there stopping the robot in case something goes bad. <laughs> but. Uh, but this, uh, the, right now, if you look at this, this part, we're actually forming almost overhangs. Um, so we can form more than 90 degrees. The way we do it is through what we call restriking. Basically, we, we wanna... Yeah, so the way we do it today is through restriking, which basically allows us to form a shape and then go inside that shape and add more features to it and get to a 90 degree wall angle. So as you can see here, you have a part that is uh, uh, formed and then you're adding uh, features that are at that overhang basically on this part. We're adding those dimples into the part that are at overhang. I think there was another question. I'm going through the questions to just make sure. Uh, so we talked about 90 degree wall angles. Um, so accuracy uh, and uh, you get into the process. So yeah, really comes down to how much we can measure. Uh, right now we have uh, a, a scanning system that can allows us to measure the tolerances up to half a millimeter. Um, and uh, so we can get as close as possible to the half a millimeter. The robots are repeatable down to 0.2 uh, millimeters. Um, but productionized capacity that we've advertised today is plus minus two millimeters, and we're slowly getting it down to uh, sub millimeter. So there's a path to get to sub millimeter. Um, but right now, we are, what we're promising is around uh, plus minus two millimeters. Um, and that's irrespective of the geometry. So, you know, traditional stamping usually you express accuracy as a percentage of the longest length in your part. Um, but with us, it's actually absolute because we're locally deforming the sheet. Uh, so it comes down to basically how much we can measure and how much we can affect. Um, so plus minus two millimeters today, but hopefully we're going to get to below half a millimeter uh, in the next, uh, next few months. So let me go to the, to the other questions. So we talked about the accuracy. What's the status of the mobile robots? We can actually, hopefully, maybe we can walk you to show you a little bit of what the mobile robots look like. Let me look at the quick, quickly at all the questions. Maybe I can bring my laptop with me. Um, I want to make sure that as we're walking and showing you different parts of the form, I can answer your questions as well. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about our mobile cell. So there's a new cell we're developing at the moment. It's actually in the other a part of the facility. Um, which is a mobile platform. You can put it on the back of a truck. Um, and uh, that one, the first version is actually gonna be at Fabtech this year. So if you are going to the Fabtech, you should be able to see that cell running 
in the KUKA booth. Um, and we are actually also deploying it to an Air Force base later this year. Um, uh, so we should be starting next year, we should be able to deliver portable cells that have these robots that can be on the back of the flatbed and we can deliver it to a facility near you. So here's another part. And to just give you guys a sense of scale, this is a, the length of this frame is around five foot. Uh, sorry, the, the height is five foot. The length over uh, the total frame is 12 foot. So this part is around five foot by maybe five, five and a half, six foot. Um, and this one I think is actually a composite mold uh, that you're gonna lay a composite in. That part that we just saw is a two millimeter uh, aluminum. Uh, and the and now this is actually a much thicker sheet. So here we're looking at a, I think it's probably really a two, three millimeter. Um, uh, mild steel, so significantly higher forces uh, to form this part. Um, uh, so we can do sheets that are from half a millimeter uh, for, for steel up to probably uh, three, four, five millimeters for mild steel. Um, for stainless, probably up to three. Aluminum, probably up to six millimeters uh, thickness. So we can almost get into a clay regime um, uh, with that process. Let me go back to the questions. Do we scan the parts during the forming? Um, so traditionally, we used to scan the parts after forming. But as we are building models of how we can basically control the process parameters to form more accurate parts in the first trial, uh, we are also scanning the parts during the process so that we can model the deformation. Um, so there's a lot of effort going into building models that allows us to accurately predict uh, what can be formed uh, if we run a set of process parameters. And we're using a lot of empirical modeling and AI ML methods to do that. Um, and with that, we have to capture the scanning, uh, scan and the geometry as formed during the formation process. And that's why we made it very easy to switch tools or sometimes we even have the scan attached to the, to the robot and scanning the part as we are forming it so that we can uh, basically gather enough data to form accurate models of the process and not rely on physics-based simulations that are potentially slow and, and take a long time and use actual empirical data from our forming process um, to, to, uh, to, to build these models. So there was another question around a, um, how many passes it takes to get to the better accuracy. Yeah, usually on our first trial, it really depends on the geometry. If it's a very non-stiff geometry, it can be a few millimeters off on the first trial um, and depends on how good our process parameters are. If it's a very stiff geometry, it can actually be pretty accurate. We have formed parts that on first trial was below two millimeter in accuracy. But what we do is we take the scan and we adjust for the path and then we use that data to improve our models for later processes but we adjust the path so that we can iteratively improve uh the forming process to get you a better part usually within um on average geometry six to seven trials we get to a part that's within tolerance um, All right. There's a question around um, pushing the speed up. Um, yeah, so I think there's the theoretical limit of how fast we can go it comes down to strain rate of the material, which we are far from. Um, so the rest of the challenge is really is about how do you go fast while maintaining accuracy and don't create resonant frequencies in the stand. So it's a lot of engineering challenges. So those are the things that our robotic team is working on. 
Um, how do you make sure that as we're increasing the speed beyond 100 millimeters per second, closer to 1,000 millimeters per second, um, we are, the robots stay accurate. So there's a lot of work that we do to make sure the robots are accurate. So we build our whole kinematic um, uh, stack and robotic stack to make sure as these robots going through forming these, these, these sheets and sometimes sensing forces as high as the weight of a truck, right? So there's deflection in the tip and the robots that are involved. So we count for all of those to make sure we stay accurate. Um, and, and the main challenge to increasing speed is how do you stay accurate while you go faster? So it's a lot of robotic challenges, a lot of uh, trajectory generation challenges um, that our robotic team is, uh, is resolving. So there's a path forward. There's no theoretical limitation why we can't go faster, but there is uh, there's engineering uh, challenges that are going through. Maybe we can also walk to the, to, the, to the big cell or the more portable cell. And we can kind of show you a little bit about, a little bit about the new cell that's coming out. Uh, walk to the other side of the facility. So there's a question around material properties. Um, we, have been, uh, we have been doing some benchmarks against hydroforming and stamping. Uh, so we are very close uh, because we are almost doing the same, you know, physical process to the sheet. We are incrementally deforming the sheet in room temperature. Um, so we are very close uh, in terms of properties. I think we did in the, we did a study and we found out that uh, we are up to 10% stronger, uh, which is because we locally deformed the material. Um, we work hard on the material a little bit more. Uh, so we're 10% usually stronger than hydroforming in that specific geometry that we, that we tried. Um, and, uh, um, uh, but that means also we get more formability out of the material, right? So we can form steeper geometries, we can get uh, more complex shapes than potentially stamping and hydroforming, but we work hard in the material a little bit more. Um, so, so there is a slight difference, but not significant. There's a question around spring back. Um, uh, yeah, so, so that's why we have our scanning, uh, uh, and how do, we, how do we account for it? That's why we have our scanning process uh, as part of the system. So when we form the part, we can actually see how, how the part deformed after spring back, and then start basically closing the loop of what needs to be formed that by the time you get the spring back, you get the right material, or we get the right part with the right properties. Um, so that those are something that our, our stack can take care of uh, by, by scanning the part and making sure we are basically forming a different part that by the end, when the geometry springs back, you get the right, right part in the end. Good question around the smaller cell desktop capable system. Um, it's an interesting thought. Yeah, maybe, maybe in the future. Uh, I think uh, uh, it limits your forming capability in terms of force if you go with the smaller robots. So it also needs to down gauge in terms of sheets. Most of our customers today really want us to do thicker parts, bigger parts. Um, so definitely we're prioritizing these larger cells. I think we can, uh, in theory, go to smaller cells depending on the customer need. There's a question around if we can be bought, one of these can be bought right now. Yes, you actually sell these cells. Like, you're, like I said, we're deploying our first manufacturing cell that we sold to Air Force. Uh, in uh, uh, this year, it's going to be deployed this year, uh, Q4. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in purchasing a cell, uh, definitely reach out to us. Uh, we basically operate however best fits your need. You know, if you for the first early trials, you want to work with us and manufacture these 
um, these uh, 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 parts in our facility and not you know buy the cell. You can start there. Um, you have different pricing schemes from like you know pricing it per part or pricing it per capacity that you can have access to in our facility, so that you can also just you know try different things without having to think about finalizing part requirement. Uh, but we also, once you get there and you have a, you know, more um, larger need or you need a dedicated cell in your facility, we can also uh, discuss how we can we can we can get you the cell in your facility. One thing, actually, on the right side, I want to also quickly show you guys here in our uh, newer cells. We also we are robot agnostic, so uh, um, if, for example, there's a specific robotic vendor that that you know, due to whatever limitation that you have to work with, uh, we can we can use Spanx or Kukas. Uh, like I said, we build the whole control system for these robots ourselves. Given that uh, you know we have to account for you know dynamic force and, and very high accuracy under dynamic mode, um, so we are uh, we can use Spanx, we can use Kukas or other other robotic system that makes the most sense for you. There's a good question around impact of the forming tool. So depending on the material, I can actually show you some of the parts maybe here. Depending on the material, you might have um, uh, tool marks on the part. So maybe we can kind of show different, different types of parts with different types of tool marks. So let's, let's start with this one. Um, this is parts of a toroidal tank that we have built. So you can kind of see tool marks on the surface. Um, we can change these um, and make it basically much finer by changing our process parameters. For example, you do a finer step, it becomes like a very, very small. Depending what process parameters you use, you can get a very niche. Uh, this is part of a satellite half dome, a satellite tank half dome that we made for a customer. Um, uh, but also you can surface finish the part afterwards. So in our roadmap, we are thinking about, you know, potentially having different set of tools that the robot can pick up after forming the part and then finishing the surface to get to a desired surface finish. There's some question around the cost of it. Um, I think you have different tiers depending on your volume. Uh, we try to be basically be cost competitive compared to your alternative, uh, and at least match the price of your alternative, but then give you your first part in a week. So our goal is you get the agility, but you're not gonna pay more. So you're gonna get your parts faster, but you're not gonna pay more than the traditional technique. So depending on your volume, uh, we're gonna give you a very competitive coat um, so you can get your parts faster, but, but, but not at a higher price. Yeah, it seems like I know, we kind of hit half an hour enough. I think I went through all the questions. If there's any other questions we can answer, but we're now at 1030, so I want to make sure, you know, I'm sure everybody uh, has their working day ahead of them, especially if they're in California. So I want to make sure everybody can get back to, um, get back to their work. Thanks everyone for joining. This concludes our first webinar, hopefully many more in the future. Uh, please, again, reach out to us. You can uh, reach us on our website, makinalabs.ai. You can email us, bd at makinalabs.ai. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks again.